Namotasa Pagawato Arahato Sama Samputasa Namotasa Pagawato Arahato Sama Samputasa Namotasa Pagawato Arahato Sama Samputasa Putang Damang Sankang Namasa Namaste everyone online I really don't know what to say. <laughs> Terrible. <clears throat> so I shared with you that that experience, and um, my own my I don't I don't perceive myself as a teacher. It's not. I mean, obviously, conventionally, I am, but. I, I, I like the word Kalyanamita more, friend. <clears throat> so I kind of feel like I'm sharing my hobby, basically. And uh, and I'm never quite sure if your mind works like my mind. Again, yeah, but so I just think, well, this is what works for me. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I, don't, I really, I, can't, I don't know, but um, <laughs> just that what... And and in part, one of the nice definitions of a kalyanamitta is that it's it's a person who shares uh, his or her secrets. So I always felt like if you're if you're revealing to me your difficulties, I have to be honest enough to reveal to you my challenges. Otherwise, and then of course there's trust that we can you know there's a kind of deep trust. So that's kind of a, how I operate. Um, <clears throat> But that experience certainly kind you know the whole idea of in how psychology we talk about repression and suppression i could see no no intention there at all in 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 that vein nothing and my mind was very very happy my heart my body was kind of in kind of good shape for a 77 year old and yet when the causes and conditions were there that arose and that that really is the way we look at the people ask well if 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 there is no self in this causal link of experiences we have we have well we mean what's happening and so buddhism uses dependent origination with this as condition there is that when this is that is this being that comes into being Without this, there is not that. This, that conditionality. When there's not this, there's not that. And so, in the last analysis, all I can, I, you know, for myself, I say, well, the conditions had to be very, very intense for that to arise. Uh, and it arose, and it ceased, and awareness was the same. And, I, and then I started to think about, you know, like, oh, I'm very aware of my body. And then I, I did see that the hara e opened up even more. It's pretty open. So there was some, but it was pretty minimal, pretty minimal. So, I don't know. But it made sense. You know, it made sense in terms of my my experiences there. And I'll, I guess all I can say was I was prepared in a way I didn't... I wasn't, I wasn't expecting it, but the the faculties were there to process it in a way where I I, I, I didn't practice wrong speech. <laughs> That's, you know, you don't want to make more karmic mess out of your life. And uh, I, I rode through it as gracefully as possible. 
and I, I, I felt freer at the end of it. And, and so that's a pretty good result, right? Not, not a bad result, but it was shockingly, shockingly strong. So the question here, it kind of, <clears throat> usually around the second or third day of the retreat, feelings, memories, sankara from childhood, or deep down in the consciousness come up and bubble. Is that the karma that has been repressed at that point? Is that uh, part of the purification process? Um, so again, when I read that, I, I kind of rethought repressed. Well, I, I don't know what the, I mean, that's what psychology uses, but there is, there's no, there's no intentionality there, is there? There's not like someone, okay. Uh, and so psychologists can help me run around this, but all you know is that it has arisen and that it will probably create a strong sense of self, I guess. And to not believe that, to see that this is a, a, ca a causal thing that has arisen. It's natural. It's a part of nature. The flow of consciousness is natural. There is nothing uh, unnatural about that. And, and, and the, I guess the goal of our, our life is, is non-grasping of the five khandhas, non-attachment, as we say. So I even like the word purification, you know, I kind of believe in that, but having had that experience, purification sounds like I'm impure, right? And I kind of, I'm rethinking that. <laughs> I'm definitely in a rethinking mode, because awareness is not impure. Awareness is neither pure or impure. So those things are rising. I'm, I'm just thinking on the trot here, right? Um, maybe it's simply Well, well, certainly, I've, I've, I've experienced a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, okay, and that has gone through consciousness, and I've witnessed it a lot, a lot, a lot, and I feel free of those cons constructs. So I guess you could call that purification, yeah? yeah that kind of makes sense. And uh, anger and, and lust and things like that, too. But I'd be careful to use a kind of analogy that I am impure, which is another tradition, <laughs> because awareness is neither pure nor impure. So the challenge is maybe not purification, but you know, we talk about, yeah, you know, we talk about anusai, excuse me, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out for myself. <laughs> we talk about anusaya or latent tendencies, don't we? Yeah, so there are latent tendencies which are, are karmically formed. So karma is, is intention. That's what it means, really. And then intentionality creates these possibilities, and then they arise. And, and part of the tradition is the cessation of anusaya. Yeah, so that's, you, that's the way you could put it in Theravada terms. So the latent tendency for this particularly strong experience was there, conditioned by what happened then, and then the causes and conditions dependently originated, they arise, explodes in the mind, is there mindfulness? That's all, I th that's all you can really say. Is there mindfulness? Or does self you get retrenched into that? So if I, if I, if I wasn't mindful, and I believed in that, I'd, uh, I'd be in the hospital. <laughs> I'd be in bad shape. Or I would go into some um, either self-hatred mo <coughs> mode, or I'll blame someone else, and then that's rebirth. You know, so then the whole sense of Viridamo gets born uh, into a very complex thing. But I, 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 I just don't believe the thinking mind. You know, it's just a liar. <laughs> just don't go there. So there's enough, <laughs> there's enough wisdom there, uh, and and other factors to not believe that. So it it had a chance to see. So in that vein. Um, rather than seeing like, have I repressed that? 
maybe look at is there enough mindfulness uh, mindfulness to not identify with it as a self maybe that's a different not i'm not dismissing the other way of talking but that would be a more uh kind of in my way of practice it's the the problem is not repression then right it's attachment to things that arise maybe that would make sense am i making sense <laughs> So if you looked at it that way, if something arises, rather than you make a judgment about it, that whatever, but the, the, the challenge is always non-grasping and not identifying with this is nature, this is dharma, it has arisen and ceased. And then with a the very, very powerful, like Ajahn Chah's, um, if you read his, his biography, have you ever read that, the big thick one, um, Stillness Flowing? Gosh, it's amazing. And his his struggles with lust are pornographic. He's a monk and he's, you know, he's not following lustful energies, but they're just attacking him like like I've never had that kind of lustful energy go. And he and he insisted that that be put in his diary and his in his biography. They wanted to kind of um, what do you call that? Uh, uh, make it a hagiography and just kind of like, you know, he was already semi-enlightened when he breathed his first he said no way i was a human being and in the struggles he he went through with that are kind of oh that was difficult and and always the language that we that i learned in thailand was always about mindfulness e even like if you read long paul liam's um uh, what was it around now his great enlightenment um period I think it's it's, it's around th this time in Thailand all in in 1979 maybe he had a uh, Lompoliam is Ajahn Chah's successor at Wapapong which is the main monastery and he he had in his book no worries he writes about his intense practice and then his realization which is it's just wonderful to read um, and, and and now around this time of year, every year, uh, all his many of his disciples come to Wat Bapong and they practice together for a week. So there may be four hundred monks or something, and you know, kind of really doing a lot of meditation. So we can dedicate uh, with gratitude this retreat to Lumpo Liam. Uh, anyway, um, when you read that, you read it's always about mindfulness. It's never about uh, he 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 attains all kinds of amazing states of bliss and, and and so on, and he just says yeah, and I was mindful of that, and I was mindful of that, and I was mindful of that, I was mindful of that, and and or sometimes if like in in the, when uh, Ananda Venerable Ananda is praising the birth story of the Buddha, all these fabulous signs. Um, were in in the universe and 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 the buddha says yeah 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 but the biggest miracle is that i was i, I was mindful of the rising and ceasing of of the khandas something like that so always the the tradition kind of kind of moves away from from making too much of a thing of any of the khandas and just returning to the simplicity that which has a nature to arise is a nature to cease and is not personal. Mine, uncertain. This is changing. Let go. Let go. Let go. And when you when you when you witness something as changing, you are in the territory of letting go. When when you witness as something as my problem, you're in the territory of rebirth. So when I had enough um, presence of mind to experience these difficult things I have so much training in Anicca Dukkha Nata, like it's in my DNA right I just so so many years of practice that uh, I, I probably couldn't take it personally <laughs> just see what I mean although it felt tremendously personal in terms of its uh, intensity and, and, and language and imagery but I think that because even the Baramitas are not self, 
it's not like I am doing something. There is there is a, there is a body of wisdom and a body of experience which is now in, um, in informing awareness. So we call it sati sampajanya, mindfulness and clear comprehension. And it's not really like me doing something special. It's it's a build up of of uh, the capacity for awareness and mindfulness to function, but it's also a uh, an informed mindfulness. Like all of us are, you know, we're better at this than we were ten years ago. Oh. <laughs> Don't put up your hand. <laughs> but we are, uh, and and what is that? It's not like me doing it better, like I can play basketball better. No, it's 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 more like wisdom is a natural function, awareness is a natural function. It is encouraged, it is encouraged, it is encouraged and encouraged, and it begins to dominate. And then ignorance is a natural function, uh, and greed, hatred, and delusion are natural functions, and 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 they come together. And 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 our our um, our, our innate nature is to be happy, right? We, you know, we, we want to be happy, and if 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 we're not happy, we're going to be doing something about it. We might do may, might do something erroneous and create more suffering, sure. But once we're on the path, I would think that we are we are made for enlightenment, because we're we're not going to settle until we're free of suffering. And in fact, that's the that's the that's the really um, what is it? It's the I'm trying to find a good word for it. When when the Dharma bites you, you're stuck. <laughs> either either you get free, right? You, because you can't run away anymore, can you? You can't you can't go to trivial pursuits. You just can't do it anymore. And, and just, well, like some monks will, like they'll ordain, they say, well, don't want to do it, but I have to. <laughs> they don't come in, oh, is this going to be great? I'm going to get enlightened. <laughs> no, it's a lot of hard work. So if we if we build Barami, just daily mindfulness, this is changing, and start to like you, like the anicca sanya, the, the pers- mindfulness of, of of change, is not just a, a kind of philosophical concept or or an agreement that all Buddhists make. Well, we do; it's changing, but that's of course not reflective. That's just a kind of cultural statement. Ah, oh, yeah, the weather's changing. Oh, great! Took a Buddha to figure that out. <laughs> yeah. But it's. It's more profound than that, and the profundity isn't actually like sustaining the perception of change. So, when I when I when I when I ask you, listen to sound, and now notice the changing nature of sound, and notice that which is unchanging. You have to be very attentive, but you are using you're using a perception of anicca. And now you're you're attending to the sound through that through that suggestion. And to do that, you have to be very still, don't you? So the perception, listening. Oh, and then you change it, you switch it around to another sense base. That's what I do all the time. And I just bodily sensation. When you feel, let's say, my hand. And then, then I, you know, that the hand comes alive in consciousness. It's interesting. And then, is it changing? So that requires me to observe. And what's unchanging? And then I, like, I toggle between the two, don't I? Sound, hand. Ah, oh, they're happening in awareness. So a, a kind of. And I think for me, sati sampajanya is that kind of build up of intuition, uh, mindfulness, and clear comprehension through these. For me, at least, these kinds of exercises, and rather than like just believing in a kind of Buddhist dogma, because I don't think that's going to liberate. Um, 
or or like I asked earlier, like what is unchanging? And that's you know, it's not like you're going to find an answer. <laughs> but the, the the very directing of your mind with that kind of a question, what's unchanging? It takes you to deep silence. And then, then that's it. And then, of course, I've been suggesting wait. <laughs> and someone said, wait for what? Because <laughs> that's, you've, you've reached it. You're there. Right? What, is, what is unchanging? Silence. Wait, wait, wait for what? And then try to find something to wait for. Yeah? So I, I realize, like, I'm not a very technique-y kind of guy. I've never liked techniques, so sometimes I feel guilty on these retreats. Oh, I've got to give them some techniques tomorrow. <laughs> They're falling apart on me. <laughs> but if you if you have techniques which work, I'm sure you do them anyway. I mean, you have your own ways. So I'm I'm <laughs> I'm more inter- interested to make sure that there is some reflection and appreciation of that language of the unconditioned. To me, that is. Uh, I wouldn't want to shortchange the Buddhist teaching for that. So you can combine, hopefully, those things. So with a person that, uh, back to their question, um, yeah, so I would say just, like, like Lompo Cha would say, don't, don't, don't be dazzled by phenomena. Someone would come to him and say, oh, I saw devas, blue devas, red devas, <laughs> they were he says, my nah. <laughs> it's uncertain. <laughs> and another one will come, oh, Lom Po, my mind is garbage. It's just absolute garbage. Lom Po Cha would say, my nah. It's uncertain. The same answer. <laughs> the same answer. So the tendency to identify with anything, it's uncertain, it's uncertain. It's, uncertain. it's actually very powerful. But can, can I introduce it into, like, all the time? The, 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 the thing about these teachings is, you have to be very persistent, don't you? Because it's ta- it's difficult to train the mind. It's a, it's not a it's easy space to kind of <laughs> to train into. So that kind of determination it isn't the determination to become. It's the determination to apply your own insights and and the language which works for you, like really constantly, very very constantly. Well, I managed to say something. <laughs> Survive till eight thirty. <laughs> if a person wants to end his life voluntarily through assisted death because of terminal illness and pain and suffering, is that something acceptable from a Theravada Buddhist point of view? Or would the Buddha advise to die naturally? And let karma run its course. If I if I were to say, if someone asked me, I want to commit maid. I want to I want to die with maid. And and I said, yeah, go for it. <laughs> I wouldn't say it like that. And they did it just on my 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 recommendation. Then I would no longer be a monk. So very strict rules around that. Very, very strict rules. Having said that, there isn't an encyclical coming from Rome telling us what to do. And it is so complicated that I don't I don't really know. I don't know. So I've I've had um, r- relation with three people now in the last year who have taken the course of maid. And um, the, the, the last person had had uh, horrendous operations for cancer and had got through that, a beautiful man, and he had no more esophagus, so his stomach was pulled up to his throat. Mm-hmm. And he had been, he had done it, he had done chemotherapy, he had done all of that. And so then it came back, and they said, well, can, we can give you some chemo and give you another four weeks. I said, great, <laughs> four weeks of torture. He, and he chose maid. 
and uh, then he made the decision himself. And then we went and we chanted blessings. And then a few days later, his family came. And then a week later, he had died. And who am I to judge, right? What am I? I'm not going to make some kind of Buddhist judgment on that. Is it right or wrong? I don't know. I don't even karma is so complex. So I think one of the problems is that modern medicine. In the, in, in the days of the Buddha, if you got cancer, you weren't going to get chemo. So karma, you know, karma, to, to, to let karma run its course, and well, what does that mean? At what point do I say, no, no more medicine? And so it's a, it's, a, it's a problem of modern medicine, isn't it? That we know how to keep people alive, but to, to what end? And uh, certainly I would hope that I could take enough pain meds that I could see it through. I, you know, I would do that and I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put that on my brothers to have to make that choice for me. I would say, no, let's let's go for it. Um, but that's not a judgment about others. It's not my it's not my place to make judgments about that. So I just kind of if people make the if they ask me things like that or termination of a pregnancy, I say, don't ask me. I don't know. But if they make a choice, then I just try to counsel them on trying to be mindful as the situation arose. And, and um, um, this this man is a beautiful man. He's just lovely, just a lovely man. And his wife comes to the monastery now. So another, yeah, it's, uh, it's part of, kind of part of Martin life. Karma, to run its course. So karma means really intention. And then vipaka karma, resultant karma, is the result of intention. And karma, popularly now, is a kind of um, idea of fate, I think. That's the sort of popular culture idea. It's fate. It's my karma to be uh, blue-eyed. <laughs> but that's not really the idea that is kind of workable. Where it's workable is that when you make an intention, and you do something intentionally, that has consequences in stream of consciousness. So if, if I make 20 intentions in one day to be, um, to say, mock people, I make 20 jokes, mocking jokes in a day, then day two, I'm going to have a tendency to make mocking jokes. And that will alienate me from others. And that alienation from me will create social consequences. And then if I do it again, and again, and again, so character and social context from intentions. So I see it more as like habit and character that is built through intentions. Um, but lifespan, I don't know how that works either. I, I'm, I'm not sure. So, it, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy not to know, too. I mean, I'm happy to say, gosh, yeah, it's your choice. So I guess if I was counseling someone and they were thinking of doing this, I would just try to make them really, really mindful. You know, where, are you, where, where, where are you coming from in this? Are you coming from aversion, a love? Why are you doing this? So I, I guess I would just try to make them conscious. And then I'd say, uh, this is your family. Your family's got to figure this out with you. Terribly difficult. And yet, for people to be in in agony and so on, for the medical system to keep them going. I know my grandmother had an operation in in uh, Toronto, and she had a, a, a blocked um, colon or something. So the doctors operated. She was 93. You know, and I, come on. It's, it's so like, you know, what was going on there? So... Um, hospice is a good thing. Hospice. I've done a lot of work in hospice. Uh, okay, so I didn't really answer that, or I did somewhere. <laughs> well, what do you say, right? What can you say? But I think if we if we 
if we're willing to listen to the person who is in pain, then our listening will give a good response. If we just take a judgment, a Buddhist judgment, about right or wrong, good or bad, and we're just judging them from that, then we won't have a good conversation and we won't really be uh, be able to, to help them. Let, shall we have a short one tonight? The, the old man's a bit... Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, please. Andamayan, Jamakataya, Sadi, Saram, Yamaste, Sadi, 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 Sadi